The year started out dogged by the same virus that has defined the decade so far. An explosive wave of a more infectious but ultimately less severe form of COVID. This is the largest number of COVID-19 inpatients we've had in the entire two years. The brief wave gave way to new immunity and more vaccinations. By March, the state's indoor mask mandate lifted, COVID emergency proclamations along with their restrictions and protections ending in the fall. Hospitals and the state still had a tough road ahead with MPV, a new virus, but the same story of limited vaccine supply, this time disproportionately impacted on the LGBTQ plus community. This is a community issue, but right now our cases are in this community and we need to respond to them. The pandemic gives way to the triple-demic this winter. COVID cases, RSV, and a surge in the flu virus, leading to similar calls to mask up and get vaccinated. In 2022, multiple tragedies for police. In March, as officers memorialized Pierce County Deputy Dom Collada, that same day, an Everett police officer shot and killed. It was a palpable change. You, you, could, you could literally feel this this heaviness in the air. We know it's a risk that we face, every one of us faces when we put on this uniform and we put on the badge, um, but you can never be prepared for it. Those police departments still struggling to find officers as catalytic converter thefts surge and smash and grab robberies are caught on camera. Departments now calling to roll back police reforms that prevent some chases. Most officers uh, probably in the state are, are very uh, frustrated with this particular law. Renewed calls to address gun violence prompted by tragedy like the death of Devon Pickett Jr. in Seattle. The mission Devon and I believed in with our blood, sweat and tears was keeping communities connected. And a deadly shooting in a Seattle school. The system in place to protect us failed us. One of the year's biggest trials involved one of the region's top law enforcement officials. Hey, it's Troyer. What can I do for you? Sheriff Ed Troyer accused of false reporting for telling dispatchers a black newspaper carrier threatened to kill him and then walking back the claims. But ultimately, we, the jury, find the defendant not guilty of the crime of false reporting as charged in count one. Troyer was acquitted. Tragedies rocked the region from the death of 10 people in a float plane crash near Whidbey Island to devastation at homes like this one destroyed in a landslide. On some moments of hope. Like this dog rescued from a destroyed home six days after a landslide knocked it off its foundation in Seattle or a community banding together in Olala to save a decades old business. Pressure from the pandemic and record high inflation drive changes in the workplace, from teacher strikes after years of remote learning to Seattle's first unionized Starbucks. As food banks weather tough times with rising demand. The system has always relied upon the good will and nature and action of our residents. Communities reconnect, literally. The West Seattle Bridge celebrates its reopening in September after an emergency two-year closure that started alongside the pandemic. And in sports, a new era. Russell Wilson has been traded to the Denver Broncos, but the Seahawks find hope in Geno Smith's resurgence. Sue Bird celebrates her final game. I don't know what else to say. A drive deep to right field! And the Mariners finally make it happen. Mariners quench the wild card. The first playoff run in 21 years as a team and all of Washington look forward to 2023.